Um, good evening. This is a call to order for the Instruction and Support Services Committee. Um, my name is Jennifer Perez. I chair this committee. In attendance, we have Lori Medina, uh, committee members, um, Andrew Blitzen. Uh, today is March 19, 2024, and the time is 6.34. Um, the first item on this agenda is the approval of meeting minutes for February, February meeting. Anyone? Mr. Woodson has made a motion. I second that. And Mr. McGee has second. Any discussion on the meeting minutes? Seeing no discussion. Okay. Oh. <laughs> uh, seeing no discussion, um, we'll vote on it. All in favor? Okay. Aye. So the ayes have it. It goes through. Um, and the next item on the agenda is a discussion of possible action. On the Barnum, Bryant, Paul, Howland, and Roosevelt schools field trip to Washington, D.C., um, coming up in April, the first week of April. April 5th. I think Dr. Henry. Hi, everyone. Uh, how does it work? Just stay right there. Okay. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, for those that don't know, I'm Sarah Jane Henry. I'm the director of the Fulman and Visual Arts in the district. Um, Bridgeville Public Schools has had a partnership with Turner on Arts and the Kennedy Center for over a decade now. Um, we were able to take the kids down to the Kennedy Center to home previously before COVID, and now we're coming back and they're hosting the showcase in April. So we have the opportunity to bring up to 15 kids down. We have got 12 students who have committed to going with us. Um, each of the five turnaround art schools were offered three positions. So um, they worked to audition kids and get everyone ready. Um, we're having in-person rehearsal at Roosevelt School each week. Um, Christina Tracy, who's the music teacher there, is leading them for us. The students will be performing um, Unstoppable by Sia. So they're putting together a dance and, and we'll be singing to a karaoke track. Um, Turnaround Arts is sponsoring the hotel and a portion of the transportation. Um, they are also providing us with so it's three nights in a hotel, five meals, and a portion of the transportation, I say. Um, they're giving the kids arts experiences at the Kennedy Center, including private tours of the, of the facility, as well as bringing in some teaching artists to work with the kids. Um, we elected to go with fifth and sixth grade students because Hall, Howland, and Bryant are well, six schools. Mm -hmm. So Barnum and Roosevelt picked kids in the similar age also. Um, yeah, then we've got a bus scheduled to leave on Friday. We'll have lunch and snacks on the bus for the kids. We'll go out to dinner that night. Um, and then we'll, because the showcase is doesn't end until the show is at four o'clock on Sunday, they're having a cast party for everybody collectively. And so we wouldn't be able to get on the road until 7.30, 8 p.m. So we elected to stay Sunday night and drive home with no traffic and getting it's a good night. Thank you for presenting. Um, does anybody have any questions? I'm still trying to get into the packet actually. I was having trouble pulling in. So I'm just trying to figure out where is the packet at. I can run down and print some packets if you need. We're going to share. I have one. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Good question. Oh, go ahead. Do you want this? Oh. So yeah. each school was able to choose. And so A, they have to be able to sing and dance. So they auditioned in that regard. And then there was also a behavioral component and a maturity component because it's a three-night trip. And so we're we've got four chaperones going for the 12 students. So we do have a good ratio of staff to students, but there was an expectation that the students are mature enough to handle the nights away. Um I always ask this question because it's just a common one. Mm -hmm. What kind of insurance uh, is covering it? And I've been through it while they're, they're So the, the bus insurance is included in the packet and then the Kennedy Center has the insurance or Turnaround Arts as the network has the insurance because um, they're having schools coming from California, Iowa, all of, it's a national, <coughs> excuse me, organizing or it's a national partnership. And so our students 
will meet kids from all over the country who are also performing. So the Kennedy Center in Turner and Arts carries the insurance for us. And another one that might be comical, when is the Board of Education ever going to be invited to one of these? <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I'm retired. I need mean, to welcome to come with us. I'm retired, so I can make any of these trips. I would happily list you as a chef. <laughs> <laughs> um, they are live streaming the event, so I could awesome. text you that way. Um, Look, please share it with us. Yep. But if you want to come to DC, tickets are free to the actual showcase. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I thought I saw this, but will they have time to explore? Yes, there, there are some arts experiences that the Kennedy Center is helping us facilitate. To see. So they're putting together the structured program uh, for the kids. And as far as the this five meals included, so the other meals are? So the Kennedy Center is giving us breakfast and lunch on Saturday, breakfast and lunch and the cost party on Sunday. So on Friday, I need to provide breakfast and oh, lunch and dinner. And then on Monday, I need to provide breakfast. Lunch. I also put in some snacks because it's a bus ride. And yeah. is that coming from the nutrition center? Or? Not specifically, okay. but I can work with them if that's what you recommend. Well, we could discuss that, I guess, with the full board. Okay. Yeah. I guess we could, yeah, um, moving forward. Now, who's, um, who's funding those meals, let's say? So I have requested funds from the district. And Turner on Arts, as I say, is paying for the for a portion of the bus, the hotel rooms, and the meals that they are covering, and the arts experiences. So everything is going to be funded by the district. A portion is funded. It's it's so pretty much a split. Especially the special meals that we that are not being covered by you know the right program. right. So in, do we know a, an adequate amount for those? For the for the all the meals. meals? I budgeted for 19 people, thinking four chaperones at five, four 15 students. We're a little less than that. And the budget for all the food was $3,800. And that's based on $25 per meal on what we had to have. <laughs> I'll make a motion if nobody wants to purchase uh, moving forward to the percentage of the whole board. Um, so this will. And I think we have a date, but we have a date for that meeting. Yes, that, so on Monday, uh, let's vote. And then, <laughs> so all in favor? Aye. Um, so the meeting will be next, this Monday coming up. Sure. Um, and okay. during that meeting, we'll, we will have to waive a policy because it was uh, within 30 days. Right. Um, so we'll be discussing that during that meeting, but um, we're hoping the full board will, will approve the, the policy. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. And I'm going to make a recommendation to our lovely chair is that we can send an email to the whole board in anticipation of this, that we can get this up ahead of time, knowing this is why we want to bypass this, and I'm sure that everybody will be on board. I appreciate up. that. Thank you. The kids to serve it, you guys to serve it. You guys did everything you needed to do, so we need to, yes. I think, yes. step in the, in the right direction with them. And we'll talk so, about travel later. Oh, well, yeah. So, Terry Blossom's there. I know. Hopefully, you get some of that. Yeah. So we'll see you on Monday. That's Thank yes, you so much. The next item on the agenda is the discussion of possible referral to the full board, um, the approval of the 2024 and 2025 school calendar. Dr. Avery. Yes, thank you. Uh, I will discuss this item. This has been a, a well anticipated um, you know, movement to the, to the full board, but I'm going to go through the survey results that we provided. Uh, we provided the survey to all staff in the district uh, to uh, get their input on three different versions of the calendar. Um, one of the version seven was, you know, focusing around, you know, uh, uh, Thanksgiving break and, and the length of that Thanksgiving break. Uh, report card conferences will, you know, will occur Monday and Tuesday, followed by the Thanksgiving break. Uh, with the President Day weekend will be observed on February 13th through the 14th and the 17th. Uh, calendar seven follows the CES calendar that most districts across uh, Connecticut utilizes. Uh, and also, um, uh, it's, it was the, the one that was overwhelmingly supported by staff in the district. Uh, the other two versions, there was uh, a difference in the April break. Uh, you know, different times of the months of when that April break was. Uh, 
but over, overwhelmingly, like I said, option seven provided, you know, the most beneficial calendar for all students and staff in the district. Uh, it also balanced the, uh, the actual school year, uh, providing a consistent schedule that aligns close with other area districts, like I said. Uh, and also, and that really benefits the families that have children in, um, in other districts that they need to make sure they had uh, support for uh, them when they when they were home. So it really worked out really well. Uh, option seven also considered you know, uh, the physical comfort of students and staff uh, with an earlier end date for the school year. Uh, would also provide it, you know, uh, less time to get into the heat of June. Uh, so I think it ends closer to uh, the end of May more so than into the June time frame. Uh, you know, because like I said some of our buildings don't have air conditioning, so we wanted to make sure that we stayed in cooler months uh, uh, of May getting out. In addition to that, you know, it, it provided, you know, a, a balanced instructional days in vacation days as well, you know, throughout the year. So that, you know, uh, when you have instructional days, you need a little break in between. So we, we, we had an opportunity to balance that out a little bit. Uh, and so that worked really, really well. Uh, and then, um, you know, at, you know, lastly, it, 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 it took in consideration the uh, giving us a little bit of wiggle room at the end of the school year if we had snow days. Mm -hmm. So we can shift those days based on the number of days like this year, we didn't really have any of those days impact us, so we didn't really have to extend our uh, into deeper into the June months and kind of work from there. But um, overwhelmingly, like I said, you know, and I'll give you those. Uh, it was we had you know 514 teachers and staff members. That's 45 percent of the staff that took the survey uh, picked version seven. Uh, 28 percent. That's 318 uh, individuals picked uh, version eight. And then 200, I mean, 321, that's 28% as well, pick version nine. Uh, so overwhelmingly, 45% of, of staff that took the survey chose, uh, you know, um, version seven. And that is the, the version of the calendar that we are wanting to uh, present to this committee and move to the full board on Monday. Um, I just want to let the record reflect that Ms. Casimir has joined online. Um, so I'm going to open up for discussion. I was looking on here. Um, so this is where you were yes. referring to the data right now? Yes. So what's that 899 represent here? Those are the number of teachers taking the survey. Yeah, so, okay. I right. That's 74 percent of the teacher teaching set, teachers that took the survey, and that's 80, eight, almost 900 teachers took the survey. And then... There is 5% administrators, that's 61 administrators that took the, took the survey. Certified staff members, there were 90 of them, that's 7% uh, of the total survey takers. Classified and other staff members, 10%, which equated to 120 uh, individuals, and then 46 uh, individuals preferred not to answer that question. Uh, and so again, it, it is, and what I did uh, on, uh, yesterday was I, I I sent the letter that was created that we created, you know, and a copy of the final calendar. And we 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 sent the results to all members of the district, uh, even if they didn't take the survey, because we wanted to make sure people had the draft copy that the board was going to consider for Monday. Just making sure that everybody had they knew. Uh, also, I, I sent it to the teacher union and the administrators union, uh, you know, and we had been talking when we set up the, the survey for them that what I was going to do is once I sent it out to the teachers, I sent it out to them so, so that they had a hard copy so that we could be transparent about what we were going to put out. So it worked, I think it worked out really well, I had no complaint. The union guys never came back to me with, with any issues. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that it was in good spirits to make sure that we were transparent on which calendar it is. We had three different calendars, totally different than what they've done in the past. Uh, the first time we did this, and we, it, was just, it was just not a good feel. So we, we, we took the, you know, those results, regrouped, redid the calendars and brought these three for considerations, leaving one of the calendars, which is calendar seven, just as we, we did this year with, with movement from year to year. So it worked out, I think, to the best interest of the district 
and the number of individuals that took to serve at Excel. So when you say the unions, what unions? Teach, do you the teacher union? union? The EA or what, what uh, unions? The EA. The EA. EA. And BCAS. Okay. That's teacher administration. When, when did they receive uh, notice? Uh, did they receive the survey also or just uh, information of? I sent them what I sent out to. You know the, the three, the three, no, the three different, the three different calendars that was considered being considered. You know, and so that they knew which kid. They also did their own survey. You know, and their survey came out with a number one link for number seven. Okay, so I think they wanted to kind of check us, kind of thing. Match. So it worked out fine. Good. You know, we we talked about that prior to us sending the survey out. I, I had conversation with the president about that so that he understood what I was going to do. And as soon as I sent it out to staff, I sent him a hard copy of everything too. So being, being transparent about making sure we did that. Yes. And, the difference from and, the it, and it worked yeah. and it worked really well. So you know it did. Now the three options, those are the only three, right? Yes. Because so, I was wondering, I said, like, wait, I want to see it says seven, eight, and nine. So where's one, two, three, four, five, six? I'm just a student. I love math. No, no, no. So I'm like, where's one, two, three, four, five, six? I just pulled oh, everything man. out yeah. with the board consideration because that's the one we. I didn't want to get all in the weeds on everything else because it, just, it didn't make oh, a so difference. Also, there were other ones, but no, just these two. Just those three. Got you. Just so was three. this year's calendar the way it is right now? Was that part of those options? No, is because that it's result? different. Yeah. It's different days. All that stuff is different because you go from August through, which is different days of the of the year. So we. It's pretty much a mirror, but on the correct days of this of particular month, year. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. So we're gonna work from there. Yeah. Let the record reflect that Mr. Benningham has joined the meeting in person. Uh, Ms. Casimir, do you have any questions? No, no questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um I just want to say I, I appreciate the, the use of the survey. Um, I know we, we really wanted to put input on this after um, the last the last post calendar. So um, it was nice to see the responses in that. And so thank you for providing that for us. And I've provided the board some deeper conversations. If you look into your board packet, there's a lot more behind the scene informational pieces that you guys can dive deeper into. <clears throat> but I, I just didn't I didn't put it out there to everybody. But I concur with, with her. Like, it's nice to see the survey. Absolutely. You know what they Absolutely. Said. I pretty much took what I, the in depth pieces that I've given you guys and just put it forward in a, in a, a format. This letter went out to staff mm -hmm. you know, about the options of calendar seven so that they understand why it was chosen. Uh, and also, you're going to see a a little infogram piece here and and what happens with this exchange the bigger the word is the more important it is to people and so break so is one of the biggest words in there that's why when you start looking at the purposes of this you know it, it was that balance of academic and uh you know time off and people need that break they need to understand that and so they verbalize that and so you'll see a lot of the verbiage in the detailed reports that I gave for it as well. So it works really well. This is a great visual if you look at it in depth. Uh, and, and what we'll do probably end up doing is putting, once it gets approved by the board, we'll put a little bit of these things in and on our webpage to make sure that people understand what's, you know, what's the highlights. Some of the things that came up, April break, remember the first calendar we sent out, we moved uh, the April break to, uh, to March. And woo, it was not good. And so again, so so when you start looking at the voice of the community, and we're gonna start utilizing exchange a little bit more in depth, and the things that we do to try to get voice for the community, this is gonna be the way that we can do it because it's it's pretty on point. Uh, there's a lot of uh, thought. It's, that's why I call thought exchange. We want they want people to think about why we asked the question also in the survey, why did you choose seven? So when you take that voice and you put it into, you know, a, a written format, the, the voices are heard. It really works really. And re remember, this is the, the first year reviews exchange and I've only learned how to use it the last three months. So it's just, as we start learning more, 
we're going to push start exchange out to the campuses. And so the campuses and the principals will be able to use it to find out and get more information about what's happening in their buildings as well. I run a communications form like we had last night, you know, that have helped you in the process. Absolutely, because it, it, they can they can also help us kind of, you know, focus in on what sh we should be focusing in on and asking and being able to guide that work a little bit as well. So all those things fit. This is part of communicating how you do it, getting input from people and from staff and community members. Uh, we're going to start utilizing this a little bit more if, as we do a public forum. We can we can do a start exchange. What do you think about the meeting? You know, how did you how did it go for you? Give us your input on what went right and what went wrong. And so we can get that feedback in order to be able to do our business a little bit better. So that is a huge piece uh, in moving forward in the things that we do in this district. We got to be able to get the voice out of the community. And so this is a great way to do it. We're all learning and still trying to drive to at the same time. And so we just have to kind of be patient, figure out what we're going to do and just get it out there. So great, great question. Mr. Baker, you have any questions? Uh, oh, yes, Mr. Media? So the list of names that I see in the packet, those are the teachers that actually serve it. No, that's the whole one. Yeah, that's the whole thing in the packet. No, 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 no. What are you talking about? Okay, great. So that's the other section. Yeah, that's the other section. Great. Yes. This is all anonymous. Just the, yeah. yeah. And oh, then, okay. <laughs> yeah, the, we're gonna, we'll talk about that too before you start talking about it. Too. So you guys got some information that probably shouldn't have been out there that way, but Thank I you. just saw that as well. So so I definitely, if I may, if there's mm -hmm. no other questions, I'll. I want to respect everybody thing. Nobody questions, so I will make a motion to move this forward to the whole board for for vote. Second. Sorry. So um all in favor or any uh, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So this is gonna go to the full board on Monday 25th. Yes, thank yes. you. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty seventh of March. Um, all right, and then we have um, the pack update. Um, this was a referral to the um, instructor support committee, um, and so we want to make sure we honor our referrals and you know things back exactly on the pack. Sure. So, so, so this is just a very brief update on the packs. In your packet, it probably gives um, a lot more detail. Um, I did, you know, um, had the chance to sort of like review all of our packs. Um, just a slide. Um, the good news is that most schools do have um, an active pack, uh, and in your packet, you see some of the activities that they've done um, throughout the um, course of the year. Um, and in each pack, I would say there's at least one parent representative. You know, some um, have a full executive board and some have just members at large. So, you know, as, as you look through, so there might not necessarily be anybody who's like leading the pack, but the parents do show up and, 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 and have been um, engaged. Um, I, I had an opportunity earlier on to meet with at least two um, of, the, of the packs. Um, my hope is in the coming months to increase that. Uh, I know that previously um, there were monthly meetings that were held with the PACs, um, so that is something that um, I'm going to look to see how, how, how we can bring that back. Um, I do want to kind of highlight just a few of, of, of the things. Like I said, it's all in, um, in, in your packet, but some of the activities, I just want to highlight a few of the activities. So some PACs have done everything from organize, organizing um, food pantry um, for the community, kindergarten parent workshops, Turkey bingo, um, math night, literacy night, um, back to school night, teacher appreciation week. So there's a variety of things that the PACs have been doing um, your schools. So um, the, the, the other piece is, um, which I, I believe Mr. Brenner and Anna had, had a question on, there is a breakdown of the um, parent engagement budget. Um, and so, you know, sort of like a, a big picture summary. On average, I'll say 42% of the money that was allocated to our K-8 PACs have been spent. Um, within that, you have some schools that have spent about 96% of their money, and you have other schools that have spent about 5% of their money, right? So um, there is a range there. 
um, our high school tax on average have spent about 22% of their allocated budget. Um, now, all spending for just materials and any kind of purchasable items have to be done by April 9th. If it's any kind of staffing, um, staffing allocation, that can go through the end of the year. So that's just, you know, sort of like a big picture overview of, um, of the pack. I don't know if there are any specific questions. <laughs> How active are the six packs? Oh, so so as of now, when, when we went through the list, I'll say out of our 39 locations, I'll say probably 38 had packs. Um, and based on the description of some of the activities that they've been doing, it seems like the packs have been um, actively doing. Oh, uh, active are, are the packs in the school that are being closed. Oh, it's oh, iteration. Um, I, I'll say probably just because they appear to be as as active as um, the rest of the other packs, doing some of the similar um, activities um, that some of the other packs are doing. Um, Mr. Medina, Jim, Mr. Medina. Yeah, there it goes. I just found somebody. I was trying to look for a group. Kimberly Park City was only two July, and I couldn't find. I looked through it three times. Um. Do, do we have um, contacts for all these PAC presidents, information or emails for uh, these? Yes, we do. We do. They, they took the phone numbers and emails just out of this thing, and they, they're really public. They took the names out too, but it's for, for you guys, so it's okay. But the, the names and the email addresses came out, but we do have a, a way to kind of contact all of them as a group. Uh, through our industry uh, email as well. If I know I spoke to a few people, um, board members to try to figure out how can we get more involved with them to make sure that we can join them, go to their meetings and, you know, support them. Um, so are you spearheading everything with uh, who's, Is anybody specifically in the cabinet spearheading the PTSO and PAC? So that would be me. I, I didn't want to assume. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to assume. I didn't want to assume. So um, it, it is I, as I heard. Yes, and, and so much as what I was saying, I think something that was available previously was the monthly meetings. So my goal is, you know, within my department to bring back those monthly meetings, and that would be an opportunity. And, and that's a monthly meeting with all the PACs, um, you know, coming together, whether that's done virtually or whether that's done in person, you know, we, we would have to figure out, figure that out, but how to bring back the monthly meetings as one way of getting the board involved. Definitely, I'd be interested to find out those low performing or that they're not using their funds to try to try to activate it and pro promote those other uh, PAC leaders to maybe, you know, join together. I know you guys as a whole, uh, my understanding is that you guys are responsible for certain schools. And I would like to see that to actually coincide with how to kind of like separate them in groups, almost like in uh, regions, if you want or whatever. So that way they only have one person to speak to as far as the director. That way, there's a better relationship between the PAC leader and that thing because they're going to constantly be talking to that one instead of talking to that right up and down. Just talk to that one, and we're all part of the same cohort, if you would, or mm -hmm. column. So that'll be something that I'll be fun to learn more about and also get involved more because that's my, that's my thing. My wife was a PAC president when we were at our high school, we were active in first day night with our daughter, and then high school, my wife was a PAC president uh, in high school. So it's it's what we have on. Albert is also a, you know, you know, the champion when it comes to this. So we definitely want to be involved and almost, you know, I did that mind that last month, you know, I lost last month. So I wanted to make sure that I step up with you guys. Yeah, and I know that, you know, um, each school's pack, you know, they have their regular monthly meetings as just their own standard practice. Um, but what I was referring to was more like just district-wide gathering and gathering everybody together at those meetings. And I think that I think the other thing for me is is you know in my experience in other districts is usually there's a real big come together either day or something where you showcase all the kids from different schools coming in. I think I think for us we're new, so I think it'd be a, a great opportunity for the board or PAC presidents getting together and figuring out how we can kind of bring that back to life. 
or bring it to life if, if, if the district has never done something like that before. Because again, I think we got to be able to kind of connect that community piece together in a different way. Uh, we are currently working on the uh, a, a district, you know, um, what you going to call it, the collaboration of all community partners, you know, in order for these PAC to tap into for additional resources as well. So there's just so much that we can do that we're not doing that we got to be able to kind of get the things tank in the same room to be able to have those conversations. So and that's so easy things because I think people are wanting to do it. We just have to figure out, you know, the avenue to make it work. And so suggestions, whatever, uh, I think we can get with us. We will be able to kind of help rally the troops and, to make that come to life a little bit. I know, Ms. Benahan, I know you, we've had several conversations about what we need to do, how we need to do it, but that needs to be a priority. Uh, and I think it's an easy thing to be able to do, but we have to figure out, you know, our next steps and how we do that. So uh, again, we're open for, um, you know, a conversation around that avenue as well. Mr. Traver has joined the meeting in person. Yes, that's it. And not Yes. Okay. Um, as far as the, the spending, 5% to 96% is a, a range, yeah, to say the least. Um, you know, are there any plans to like to support that five, you know, the lower end? Um, you know, here's what you like, here's some ideas of how you can spend this money to benefit the parents in the school. Um, do we have like, or is that part of what you're thinking about in the community courts? Well, I, I even even at this point in the, the stage of the of the school year, that money should have already been spent yeah. for this school year. Yeah. So it's just an encouragement of you know either the president or the principal to make sure, hey, you know, make a notice of that. You know, so those are a little nudge in making sure that's done for the parents this year, and not waiting. Because then we got two more, two more months, three more, three more. Well, we have a spending in April 9th, so you got to get it done before then. So we will probably, what I'll have uh, Dr. Sackey do is to kind of get that. Well, all of them can get the same message that we need to get this done. And yeah, so, there's a communication that is good, going to be good going out um, probably by the end of this week to, to the PAC for well, just informing them of the, of the deadline in terms of spending and then probably have um, individual PAC precedents uh, if they want to know what their balance are to kind of reach out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we can let them know how much they have to you know, yeah, and spend. That spending just for folks who don't know is Title I. Mm -hmm. uh, like, so it's federal grant. It's, yes, so it's, a, it's a federal grant. Um, that you know, we want to spend. Yeah, we just want to spend it. So, um, yes, because it, it doesn't roll over. So, uh, Mr. Medina. So there was two dates, April 9th. That was that was for any any um yes um disposable so like um, things that you're purchasing. Uh, the end of June date is if you're hiring staff or you know like a speaker. A speaker, yeah. you're hiring yeah. some of your own staff to cover a dance, right? So mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Um, that DJ, you DJ like that. that you can go through. Okay, so like, they can't spend all the way to June just to have because I, you mentioned the word earlier, staffing. So that's why I kind of like go it down. So what does it mean by staffing? Um, it's just people that you hire specific to yes, hiring to keep the teacher behind that shot room. Correct. Or it's correct. Free. correct. Some some schools may have an end of the year dance or something like that. They're bringing the DJ in, and they need you know whatever. So it just goes that way. Um, I'll go back to you. Any other uh, committee members? Yes. Um, what is uh, because I'm new when it comes to this algorithm thing, but I and I ask you, I know you're new. We're new all together. Um, what is the procedure to getting a PAC president established? Because I understand that there's a few schools that don't have anything going on right now. And again, I understand that other people are doing things, but not the path. And we need to establish that. So what what are those procedures to establish the fact president of the school? I'll see, you know, I, I, I can give you some of my understanding of that if anyone has anything else to do, they'll have that. I think there has to be um, collaboration with the building administrator, you have informing them that, that there is an interest. I think there has to be some form of a vote from the parents to say that that's the, um, that's the 
you know, positions. And the, the three main positions, obviously, will be the president, you know, secretary and treasurer, right? So if we have those positions in place, then we'll ensure that, you know, money is being spent and, be, you know, being able to be uh, accordingly. But those are positions that would have to be uh, most likely voted on. Uh, very often, the parents that I met, there was one person who became the president because nobody else showed any interest or nobody else. There wasn't much of a... Of a, of a vote, you know, she became the PAC president just out of a need. She knew that um, the school needed it, and so she kind of stepped up and she and, and she did it. So, if there's somebody who's actually interested, I think in collaboration with the uh, building administrator, getting communication out to parents that this is the person who is interested uh, in being in, in that role, I think. Whenever you see a ministry talking about the students, but principal, right? Yeah, to yeah. ensure yeah. that's easy work. Um, okay, just want to make sure I like big words when we don't need to. I want to uh, clarify some things from uh, one of our uh, watchers, viewers online, um, that the parent money has to be utilized by the parents and not the principal. Sure, that's so correct. The parents have to initiate where we're spending the money. Sure. Or where, where they're spending the money. Controlled by those officers, are, which are by the parents, should be able to organize the spend of that. Yeah, so teachers and principals should not be involved. That's why it's important to make sure that as part of that leadership is a treasurer. That's why mm -hmm. I said you have three main positions to be the president, mm -hmm. major secretary. Yeah. to have that. Then. Um, Ms. Kassiner, do you have any questions? No, no questions. Thank you. Uh, it's been better. <laughs> Just looking at the board. Mr. Chairman, do you have any questions? I'm going to get Fred here because I know he has questions. <laughs> well, yeah, I was looking for the uh, report on, on the expenditures. We're now saying we have two to three weeks. Spend um, other than the uh, personnel expenditures. Um, and I was just looking to see where it was that we weren't spending money and curious why we hit that situation this year. With my recollection of last year, um, that we were in pretty good <coughs> shape at this point in the year. So just curious why this, how many schools we have that are so much lower this year. Yeah, I'll say, you know, some, some schools did, you know, again, a good job spending uh, yeah, yeah, money. I was, I was looking to see if it was in the packet. Oh, the actual, actual yeah, it's not, not, it's not, it's not in the packet. Yeah, yeah, but we can get that for you. But, but, so why is there, how many schools is it that are down? You said the range ran from 5 to 90. 96. Yeah. 6. Mm -hmm. That, you know, why, how many are down in the single digit, you know, teens range in the, why are they being out? Why are we down? And, I, and, and again, without having to guess, and I don't want to, I hate to guess on anything, I, I, I like to get no more facts for that. But you don't know, you don't know. Like, yeah. but as I'm looking at it, what I'll do is when he gets the report to you guys, I will have a, an opportunity for him to extract, maybe extract, you know, the, the lower level schools that don't have money spent. And we will do some, uh, some encouraging to get things done and give you specifically which schools are not spending uh, because it could be a correlation that they may not have a pack yeah. together. Right. So we have to figure out that as well. Well, that's where I was headed. Yes, yeah. right. I heard the earlier statement that pretty much everybody has a pack, but pretty much everybody has that's a pack. It doesn't really say what gotcha. they do or yeah. and how functional they are or yes, aren't. Um, I know in regard to Mr. Woodson's question a moment ago, that the six schools, at least the two in my neighborhood, Hall and Edison, uh, Edison has a functional pack. Hall does not really have a functional pack, is my understanding from the staff. Uh, and the Edison pack leader is quite active, and uh, Hall has good parents that are participating, work with teachers, but they don't really have a very active functional pack. So yeah, that, that's not even just basically. taking those yeah. two schools as an example yeah. of the range that you mentioned. And and and, and you know that's what I was going to say. Like in the breakdown um, that I, that you all have, it just shows some of the activities that uh, the different packs have been doing. And the reason why I said you know there is a range of of, of uh, schools having a pack. Some of those packs do not have a leadership. They just have active members, so members who are willing to go, like we we're saying, willing to help, but not necessarily anybody leading the ship. So. The reason why I said I didn't want to guess, if I looked through this, I would, you know, I would make the assumption that the place where money hasn't been spent doesn't have an active leadership. Now, they might have people who are attending meetings, but there's nobody guiding 
during the show. So then the question to you first, and I'm sure that one, if you all are chosen, Mr. Mann, I guess I'll clarify it for us to you. Um, it, uh, my recollection of my time at Blackland, where I was on the school governance council and the school leadership team, is and more closely with the PAC leaders, is that um, the administrators should be helping them work out the expenditure of this money to make sure that that money is wisely spent and, and, and time, spent in a timely manner. So I guess that's, you know, you're sending out a memo or an email is not, you know, should be an administrator working with the whether they're active members or elected leaders with the parents in that school to make sure they use up their money. Oh, yes, any, their money. any kind of communication like that, then I would send out some you know, copy of yes. the administrator so they're aware of what I sent out to their back. But you're the, the cracking of the whip over a parent, <laughs> the cracking the absolutely, whip. absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and, I, and I think for clarity for I think for, for Dr. Saki and I, you know. There are some districts that the principal is not involved at all with PACs. And there are some districts that the principal is very, very involved with PACs. So I think the clarity for us is that, in my understanding, the board is wanting the principal to take a, an active lead in the involvement of the PAC into the school environment, which I think would be very important. We want our principals to be supported. Yes, I think. Yes, very much so. Not, not, um... So yeah, like, very much so. Um, very helping much helping them facilitate what has to happen. Yes. Yes. Every right. and, and these, these are these are these are pack leaders I've worked with in the past as my, my clients. So all of them, all three of them understand this. And just well, to put it in a fire for me, um, uh -huh. and I got somewhat of a permission to do this respectfully. Yeah. Um, it has big power to power. And this is why when you speak those numbers to us. That's what we should have it here now. Because if you're going to speak about numbers and percentage of who and where and what and who and me, that's why we need the information that way we can assist you and help the price move forward. Because now we're, we're delaying this a little bit longer, which I, I need most time. Yeah, you know, I always see that. But, but so, for, yeah. for, for clarity, this, this, uh, this item came to us that we need information about the pack. There was not a detailed Sorry. perspective. <laughs> Uh, I just want to make sure I'm clear because that we, he just got things together to yesterday to get into. I said I need things for the for the for the board packet, so he did his best effort to get it done. But moving forward, we know what needs to be there. The budget has to be there. Yeah, I know you want it, and she didn't give you the floor yet. So I um, thank you for your time. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I will get to that. I will. So. Okay. None other than Mr. Benahan. <laughs> you have the floor. Sit back. Sit back. Hold on to your chair. Thank you, Madam Chair, for giving me the floor. And I was waiting for this woman. Um, <laughs> I know you, uh, I don't want to refer you to the situation. It's a mechanic and big day. So, right now, for the third time school, we, from the EWI I have when I was in the student family committee chair, and in 2023 to 2024, it was on total $193,756. And it would be $193,756 have to be spent before now you say April 9th. And her essay 46%, that's a very low number. It's supposed to at least we got, you know, March, we March already. Mm -hmm. For me, I feel like I, uh, I'm done next, you know, next week, what am I going to do? So we're supposed to at least I have 75 or 80% done, you know, and that's very something stressed me out to have 46 But like you said, this money is not going back. They're going to lose this money. And I know the state and the federal, when they see, and I told you about experience for so many years, they said, why are we receiving the we, we the money to raise for school for those leaders by one grant and they're not using the money? And do you know what they're going to do? They're going to low. They're going to lose. Okay, they don't need to do too much, so they're low. I can give an example that Central High School, the the uh, BDSO, start with 15,728. And what I see, they're not spending the money the way it's supposed to be. They're gonna, you know, they have until April 9, like you say. But it's very sad that pack leaders they have this money to work with parents and not using the money the way it's supposed to be. And for each school, and they pay for the pack and big ASO for the title one grant, it's nine dollars fifty-nine cents they pay for each student they have in the school. Right so you can imagine if who have, you know, it's like I said, nine dollars fifty-nine cents they pay for each. Uh, student is in the school. Um, 
you know, so that in total that we have around 20,204 students maximum in the schools. So in total, it's at 193,000 dollars, like I said, with 756. Um, another thing that's very important that in the on, um, school bylaws is in, in the website. One of the things in page five, they say city employees or if you work from the board of education cannot be part of PAC and PDSO. He's there for so many years. It okay. was up. They vote for that. It's very important because I know, and I don't want to bring it to there, but doctor, you can find out and I can talk to you. We got a free for the uh, employee for the BOE. And people work for the city cannot be part of the packet because it's gonna be coming. It's there in the in the packet of us and back by law in the website we have. Um each school is supposed to have a president, vice president, secretary, five men at large. In addition, we can have a secretary in Spanish or translate another language. And it's very it's very good. And you need to have elections, you need to find out the tournament, the, the, the positions for two years. So we need to find out each school when they have election, what was the last one, you know, and how many, how many, how long they have the pack in that school. Um, it's very important that each parent, parents, each leader, pack and private previous or president, do workshop for parents. Don't and get the money. Oh, let's party, let's buy this, let's put the whole thing, let's have fun, you know, stuff like that. Buy this stuff is not educate for the parents. And I'm going this for years as um, Miss Kathy Boyce, who was my, my president for Basic High School and Drift the Packet, and we we'll always talk about that. The money is for educate our parents. Yes, we can buy stuff for them. You know, they use a pencil, notebook, stuff they needed. You know, I understand. Of course, we can buy food for them because I know some leaders, if parents come after work, they say, oh my God, I have to go to this meeting and then after that I have to cook. Let's give a good, a, new, a, a nice meal, you know, and so that's very important, you know, to be sure because we got students. So they have to use the money exactly for educating parents. Now principals, now schools, now uh, the school or teachers have to be touching the money at all, you know, because it's again the law about the state form of hard work, and we have that, that law. Um, the PAC president, of course, they have to talk and communicate with the principal from the school. It's the it's mandatory. Why that is mandatory? Because you don't know the principal has something to do with that thing, you know, and it's, it's the it's the supervisor of that building. So each PAC leader they supposed to do an AR a hundred, AR that a hundred. That's me have to do for custodian and security. The PAC president has to let them know the principal so they can submit that. Uh, documents to be sure they have a press uh, a security and a custodian for that night. Right? That's very important it's part of the process. That's why the leader has to speak with the principal and talk together when they do the workshops, what kind of uh, uh, the action plan, because you know they can use teachers. Another thing, they can use teacher form the board education to do workshop. I believe they pay uh, they can make two hours and it's thirty nine dollar with some change that the pack or by president of PTSO president, they can pay to the teacher to do a workshop for the parents about science, bullying, you know, um, anything is good for the for the parents. So staff, they can, you know, they can get, they can have a staff, you know, the staff. Um, it's very important, vendors. You know, you, we got vendors that sometimes, I believe the last time I spoke with uh, Daniela Clark, we have more, almost about 75,000 vendors. <laughs> And from that 75,000 vendors, I believe like a 20 is from their school, but they all, they, they don't want to deal with it because the pay. Um, it's very important that I know, and I don't know if you have, uh, doctor, you have the, the, the high list of the vendors. If you can't find that, you can send it to all the pack leaders, because sometimes friends, uh, leaders, they're looking for vendors. They say, oh, no, I'm not going to be no more vendor. No, because the city, they don't pay me the way it's supposed to be. I don't know why, and this is what we have it for so many years, Madam Chair and everyone. In the public, everybody listen. The money is there to pay these vendors. I don't know why it takes so long to pay for the vendor, and that's why we lose so many amazing, magnificent vendors. Because I told you, I, I still have my vendors when they still working with me. So why they take so long to pay the city pays for them? The money is there. We're not asking for long. We're not asking. Let me see if the city approve it or the board education approve it. No. Like I say, one hundred ninety-three thousand dollars, seven hundred fifty-six. The money is there to pay for this vendor. I don't know why it takes so long to pay. And that's why the vendor said, "No, Mr. Benia or any pack leaders, no, I'm not going to do business with you." And it's bad because we're losing a lot of good vendors. They care, you know. <clears throat> Some of them they say that's okay. 
I hold it. I know they take too long. You know, you have, let's say you have a bank right now, let's say tomorrow, they take almost a month to pay for the money. Mm -hmm. And then the vendor said, the vendor said, where's my check? And when we need to contact the, everyone to be sure that when they get the check. And it makes sense for me. Um, um, like I said, we had this full pack by laws, it's in the website, but two years back when I was in the chair, we talk about some school, um, and we got a draft, and I can will send it to you. That I know, Pat either me and Ms. Boyle, we part of that. That we have a draft for the uh, school bylaws and the district type bylaw. They really vote for that, and it's still because the former superintendent of school takes so long to put it in the website and to approve it to the board. This is coming from back, and I can send you the information. We got the draft, so you can guide. We can see it. It was approved from the board. So it's the current. One online. No, the one that's online is, is is still there. Is but we have draft one. I can send it to you. That the board um, um, say it was nice. They not okay. they don't we're supposed to bring it to the board to approve it. And the attorney to check the attorney from the board to check any change of or uh, letter, something something simple. But I will send it to you. But it was very nice. How long, you can see. How, how long ago was this adopted or? It was the last year. When I was, I was last in, year? Yeah, when I was down, I was in the chair of the uh, student family. And I can come <clears> forward <throat> to you, you can guys, they can see it, you know, in team, you know, they will be, because they really want that. The parents really, the parents, the, are you yeah, voting the on parents, it? Yeah, yeah. It just requires board yeah. approval? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, then I can. Well, they can send it to us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, 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 we'll review, we'll get legal to take a look at it, and then we'll bring it back to the next, um, uh, committee meeting mm -hmm. uh, and then that gives us a chance to kind of vet it a little bit making sure there's any updates of, mm -hmm. of current I mean new policies because every year there's new policies that comes about so we have to take a look at that mm -hmm. and then we'll bring it back to the next yeah. committee I'm, I'm, I'm there. That. And it's very very important you know because I know it's there and it's it's good for everyone yeah. everybody is clear what's going on with the school um, and going back to uh, um, what's to say about all oh, how these leaders feel that the school is rolling and having spoke to them, they're not happy. It's really this way. They were not happy. They maybe, you know, because they worry about the parent. You know, I tell them, don't worry about it. We try to work, you know, together as a team. Let's see, you know, let's see what happens. But it's very important, very important that parents, that all these leaders do work with us. Educate the parents, not to go party, let's have fun, let's buy the speaker, let's go to fun. No, they can do trick. Let me tell you something, they can do trick, but the trick has to be educated for the parents. Or you're not going to let you know a month in advance so you can have the bus and then everything, you know, because I don't know if you know, we got 10 free buses that the uh, transportation gave it to the publication, right? You look at me like you don't know that. Okay. So you can figure it out, you can figure out that because it's good to have it. Or like, you got to let them know in advance. It goes to the Board of Ed or yes. to school? Yeah, it's, it's, it has to be, <clears throat> yeah, uh, for the school and trade for the students or they can, because I did. When I was the former PTSO president, I used school bus for the work to do workshops. Gotcha. You know, or they can go another uh, event or a convention for another time. What about education? They can do that. Or like a parent, if, if a campus does a, a big parent workshop, and yeah. you can use the buses to pick up people. To yeah, to I, did, I did it when I was in my okay. basic. I did it to go to Waterbury, and I know this um, boy was with me, another team of um, leaders okay. for the school. Everybody came to the basic, and we from there to the basic. We go to Waterbury for a big convention, you know, stuff like that, you know, and they and, and, and I used to tell you this because, you know, guys, this is my passion for so many years. Everybody know that, you know, and I want to make sure our parents be educated, you know, they help them because I know if we have this money, why we didn't use the fact? Why didn't we use the fact? Yeah. How do you suggest how do you suggest that we get parents? And administrators involved in, this, in, that, in the PTA program, where you know they haven't been involved for the past couple of years. First thing is the communication. If they're PAC leaders, they want to work for the school, they want to work for the parents and support um, principals and the staff. That's the most important thing: is the communication. They have to communicate. They have that uh, policy open. You know, I know if they have sometimes things go up and down because nothing is perfect. But if they sit down and try to um, create something good from school, trust me, they will make it successful. You know why? Because I'm going to tell you about experience in the basin. I'm still have working with the basin. I'm still working with the principal, the formers, and the ones we have. Why? Because we got communication and we spread and we communicate we always. Can you have a bypass of two like a house guy? 
you can you can you can expect the principal to be like him. So I don't know how 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 you uh, how, how easy it is how easy it is to get you know everybody mm -hmm. to act the same way. I think that one, the big thing for that though is as as we make it an initiative initiative for the district to focus on parent involvement, we have a monthly meeting with principals mm -hmm. and we can kind of you know share, hey, the need for parent involvement. Your campus, we're gonna start tracking how much involvement parents yeah. are being able to do. It's just really encouragement. It's not necessarily you can't make them do whatever, mm -hmm. but when you when you put things that are important for as a district, if that's a focus, then we can we can bring that down and push it down from the campus principals back down to teachers and to families. And you start encouraging those things to do and even just having a roundtable conversation. I mean, anybody that had a, you know, a great parent event this month, talk about it. You know, so things like that is just really casual because you never know who's gonna who's gonna be called on. So, mm -hmm. but those are the types of things as you blend it into your leadership programs, whatever you do, it's that's an easy easy way to be able to do it. And it's up front and on the on the table. I got another question. Something like relay or those programs, stuff like this. So, so it'll show you where those where it's just lacking and. That, that, that those type of things are like not necessarily with relay, but you can tie those two things together. I mean, I think one of the things that I'm looking forward to as board members is to have you guys in those conversations with when, when we train teachers and and because it comes together to be able to kind of make sure that we're understanding from the bottom up how it's coming. But for for the parent piece, as long as you you have an academic you know, like a science night or a math night or a reading night, it's easy to tie, you know, uh, PTOs and in, in, to make it make them involved in that process. Now, PTO, add your PTO yourself to other issues. Did I hear that, that board members can't be members of these? What, what did you say? The board well, members? Yes, now, uh, people work in the board of the kitchen. You know, we're working for it. Yeah, we're laying a step of CD, town, CD people who are there cannot be part of the yeah. so city. Staff, city, 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 um, they're not as engaged with some of the reasons why, you know, um, for that particular community, they don't have a uh, active path. So I think with that, we can get a level of feedback from mm -hmm. them through that process. What's on that? This uh, to my ear that that includes the elected officials. And our fees. So we yeah. can okay. Yeah. okay. Can I also yeah. add, uh, um, um, you know, this, this is also from the viewer online. <laughs> uh, that each year new parents come in to the school. So, you know, we try to roll them in as some, in, in a way, because um, some parents don't know that the PACs even exist. Mm -hmm. So if we can, um, you know, there's two year terms I saw, and you know, if, if you have a parent who, who coming to the end of their K-3 uh, PAC experience, you know, making sure that they roll in these newer, especially the ones that are in the younger grades, because they're going to be there longer, right? Yeah. So this, really this get that involved. I, I, I can talk about myself. I did it for four years in back to back. I ran for my two years and I run again the election. And parents vote for me. So we've been doing my school so we've been there for like a as like right now, like a board members. Um going back to the question a bit to what you know, you said about the parents and the, the principal. It's very important that the parents, you know, the leaders speak with the principal. You can remember the principal is in charge of the building and they have to communicate with the parents, you know, and, and it's good for them when well, you can know who's the parents who's coming to school, who's gonna be leader. They have a, it's a, it's a good, it's a great group. One important thing, if they don't have a half of PTSO, they cannot touch the money. Put it clear in the record, the record. that money has to be there. They cannot be touching. Of course, the school's going to lose the money. You know, it's sad, but they cannot touch the money. You know, they don't have a fact. Either. And it's something that I'm working for so many years about B10. B10 is a form that will send to you, uh, doctors, that it's good that the principal and the fact president 
have it. They can, it's a work because sometimes people, they like to have a title. I'm the president, I'm the vice president, I'm the secretary. Don't sit down and lean back. You have things to do. You have to work with parents, you have to work with staff, and you have to deal with money. So it's a big thing that will send it to you. And it's part of the, in the package. If you order, let's say, a case of water, you're supposed to go get the water, how many coats, how many kids, and at the end of the day, president of the back, back president of the PBS president have to sign it in the principal. That's a record. You know how much money you don't need to go be calling the, the, the grand office. Oh, how much money I got? Where's my money? So with that record, record and you have it. And then you know your signature there had to be signed by the president in the principal the same day, the same time. Not only the payment and it's happened to two or three. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things that I really can send it to you that I know that the teacher of principals had to work with the package because of a uh, former superintendent, I don't know if they put it in the contract, it's part of the review that, you know, like I, they had to work, it's part of the contract, I believe, that had to work in package with uh, with the leaders. I believe you know what I'm talking about. So that's why I say that presidents had to work with the principal. It's very important. This is part of my thing, you know, for so many years, and you know, I would love that Robin Medina said I have to work with the you know, with the, with the leaders. That I will let you know so we can work because they have to spend this money as soon as possible before April 9th. Thank you, Madam Chair, for your time. I, yeah, on that note about the money, I just wanted to know because I don't know if anybody can find out or the question was made before or we can look. Is there a way to make an extension for that April 9th? Can we double check? The trailer should be sorry. Why? The trailer should be sorry. And they say, it yeah. yeah, I think that's an internal timeline. There might be a little bit of room. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. 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 Or in case. Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. No. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I believe that the uh, the work of the PAC PTSO is in the administrator's evaluation. Gotcha. Part of the evaluation. Yeah, that's, 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 teachers that's are evaluated for the work with parents. That's part yeah. of the administrative evaluation. <coughs> but that's what you meant by that's the work. That the work. Yeah. And, and also, you know, school governance council, all that. Okay. Mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. ties together. Those people are all in the school and the bodies too. Yeah, that's the work. Thank you. Yeah. Miss Casper, do you have any more questions? Yes. yes. No, no as, question. Thank you. As long as they can spend the money before it, in, in, encumber it before April 9th, it's fine. And that's what we've done at all. And uh, we still have a couple of weeks to do it. And if you have already planned for May and June events, you can do it in the next two weeks and we should be good. So that is, if you want to become uh, reach all these leaders, I would hope you, you know, I got the time so they can spend the money. I would hope the new leaders, whoever they come, you know, I got my team. Then we can sit down with them and show them how they can run. You know, I would love to. That's part of my job. That's what I'm here for. There are going to be school teams that would probably need your mm -hmm. assistance. Um, because like there are some, some teams and the information is that they clearly have a yeah. leadership structure and some that don't. I think the ones that don't, that's the ones. I can close my eyes and I can read both of the highlights. Which one? I'm such a little bit of data. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, any further questions? All right, so the next item on this agenda is to adjourn. All right, so Mr. Woodson. He didn't say his motion. Made a motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't make his motion. Like, Thank you. I speak, he's going to use all the words. What's your motion? Yeah, to adjourn. Accepted that. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. Thank you. No, I just don't know. I'm like, uh. <laughs>